Hi, I'm David Harry, and in this video, I'm going to talk about a pretty massive problem that Ye have got with their Ye Light Action camcorder. And that particular problem is the fact that the camcorder does not record at any of the frame rates it says it records at. They're all wrong! Okay, so I'm going to try and keep this video as short as I can, although it needs a little bit of technical explanation. Now, what it is, straight from the word go, the Ye Light does not record the frame rates that it's supposed to, or it doesn't even record the frame rates that it says it does record. Okay, and I'll explain what it does do, and well, I don't know why it's doing it, but I can explain what it is doing and why it's wrong. So, first off, in the UK, or in any kind of PAL territory, we shoot and play back and record and edit everything at either 25 frames a second or 50 frames a second. That's just the way it is. It's a standard. Go and ask Simty, they'll tell you all about it. So what happens is you record at 25 frames per second on the Yi light, and unfortunately, the frame rate comes back at 24.98 frames per second. Now, not only is that incorrect, it's not 25, it's not even a standard. Now, on top of that, if you go to 50 frames a second, it comes back at 50.04 frames per second. So once again, not only is that not a standard, it's completely incorrect. So here's where the problems start kicking in. That footage that comes out that the Yee Light says is 25 when it's not, it's 24.98. If you put that footage into a 25 frames per second timeline, you're gonna get ghosting and frame interpolation. So what that means is you'll see like you'll see jutters and stuff like that, and like the frames will start looking like they're not right it can actually manifest itself in a number of ways frame interpolation it depends how the NLE interprets the actual frame rate and how it tries to correct it to put it back in but you know regardless of how it does it it's gonna look wrong so 24.98 frames per second doesn't go into 25 so what happens is your edit system has to try and stretch it very slightly and what that results in is the fact that it has to like double frames or you parts of frames and then what happens is you don't get clean frames on a, on like the pair frame basis it's using interpolated frames to stretch that 24.98 slightly back to 25. In fact it's just going to be much easier if I actually show you the problems so here we are in my edit system and as you can see in my bin over here I've got two clips one and two now what it is both of these clips are identical two is just a duplicate version of one so if I go and have a look at the properties on clip one and as you can see here in fact this is now saying it's 24.97 frames a second so that's even changed so it looks like the camera is just changing randomly how many frames a second it's going to be recording okay so that says 24.97 then if i go to clip two which is a duplicate this should be exactly the same and yes there it is 24.97 so i'll okay that then we'll have a look at my project settings so i'll go to project settings and as you can see up here we're on 25 frames a second for the project okay now if i get hold of clip one and bring it down to my timeline I actually know that there's somewhere in the timeline which has got movement in. So if I come to the end of this clip here, and towards the end, I think I'm like moving my hands and stuff. Yeah, there we go. So let me just kind of cue this up a bit, right? Ah, see straight away there. Now, watch what happens. You can see there my hand is ghosting. So there's like a solid version of my hand almost here. And then there's a ghosted version here. Now what I'll do, I'll just frame advance backwards and forwards. And if you look at my face a bit, or if you look at my hand, because they're the only two real moving things in the frame, you'll see this problem happen. Okay, so as you could see there, you could you could definitely see ghosting, which is actually frame interpolation and blending going on. Now, there is a way around that, but this is because this is exactly what the footage should look like, but people probably wouldn't know to do this, and not all edit systems are going to allow you to do this either. So if I go to that duplicate one there, 
basically, if I go to properties and if I force it to be seen as 25 frames a second, now what will happen, my timeline will actually read out one frame at a time correctly instead of trying to like, you know, frame blend or do any kind of interpolation. So now if I go to the same bit at the end, let me queue up. Right, so I'm roughly at the same place there at the end. Now let's go full screen. Now, as I step through this, you, what you will see is solid images. See, so as you could see, there, as my hand was moving, there was no ghosting or anything like that. Any slight blur that might be on there, that would actually be down to like just blaring because of the shutter speed and whatnot, but definitely not frame interpolation. Now, it does the exact same thing with the 50 frames a second footage. That's because it's actually recording 50.04. So in that instance, it's got to shorten that a little bit to make it fit into 50. The net result of that is exactly the same frame interpolation. And whether that's done by nearest neighbor or whether it's done by frame blending, doesn't matter, it's wrong. So basically, the Yi is not recording the frame rates right. Now, I can actually quite categorically say that this is definitely the case because because, and you can try this for yourself, if you take one of the clips, say a 25 frames per second clip from the Yi Light, just take a little short thing, 10 seconds long, five seconds even, upload it to YouTube, and then reload it back down, and then analyze it after YouTube has encoded it. And what you'll find is YouTube will spit it back out at 24.98 again. That's because YouTube sees it as 24.98 and encodes it at 24.98 and then spits it back out at 24.98 because YouTube is only encoding to the exact frame rate that it's seen on the input file. Now that actually proves that the file is completely wrong because YouTube copies the file and spits it back out the same way. Now, for you guys in NTSC territories, you've still got a problem there as well because the camera actually does record a solid 30 frames a second and a solid 60. Now the problem with that is, is you guys don't use 30 and 60. You may refer to it in shorthand as 30 and 60, but one is 29.97 and the other one is 59.94. So as you can see there, you're gonna have the same issues as what we will have in PAL land. And that is your timeline has to readjust itself with what Yi is giving you because it's not the exact same frame rate that you should be using. And so the end result, once again, is going to be frame blending of some description, frame interpolation and whatnot. Anyways, yeah, so, yeah, I don't know what to say because I actually got hold of the Yi Light because I had like a horrendous time with the 4K Plus with its audio. Um, and it just seems that, you know, Yi have got problems with like, well, definitely two of their cameras so far. And these are major problems. The 4K Plus can't record audio properly externally. It records at a massively reduced 48 kilobits per second, which is insanely low for anything. And the weird thing about that is, the 4K Plus is Yee's uh, flagship camera. That only records at 48, whereas the Yee Lite records at 128 kilobits. <laughs> What's that all about? So you've got that massive problem with the audio on the 4K Plus. I mean, there might there might well be other issues there as well, but the problem is I'm gonna have to send mine back because it's no good to me. So I don't wanna delve any deeper with it in case I do find other problems. And then on top of that, you've now got this problem with the Yee Light, which doesn't record to any conform frame rates. Anyways, yeah, so I didn't want this to, to end up being a rant or not. And I think I've been really fair here because I've only given like absolute facts about the problems that are going on. So if anyone's got a year like you really need to check this out. I don't know if this applies to all the different versions of the firmware, but it most certainly applies to the very latest one as of January the 8th. 2018 okay so i'm going to wrap this up now and hopefully I've, I've drawn you know drawn the attention to something that people who use the year light really do need to know about and ye if you come across any of my videos please make some response to them as well because you've got some serious technical issues going on with your camcorders anyway thank you very much for watching my video take care and goodbye now